Hello YouTube, sidekick here in my trusty A4E Skyhawk because uh, we're going to do another community A4E Skyhawk tutorial today and today we're going to be talking about cluster bomb units. Not to be confused with uh, Mark 20 rock eye cluster bombs or more modern droppable CVUs. These are the cluster bomb dispensers that as far as I know in DCS are unique to the A4. Now, these units can be installed on the ordnance screen uh, as pods. Let's take a look in the mission editor. You can see that here. Uh, it turns out you can install them on the inner pylons, and you can install up to two per pylon. So you could go with four uh, cluster bomb units. Now, you have the choice of installing one of three different versions based on the bomblets that they uh, hold. There are uh, version 1A, 2A, or 2B, but as of the time of uh, that I filmed this video, um, there was a bug that was preventing the 2As or 2Bs from working, so we're going to use the 1As. Now, as you can see, the dispensers consist of 19 tubes. Uh, with the version 2s, you can actually go in and have the ability to set how many tubes will actually dispense a bomblet um, on, per pulse. Um, the 1As, though, dispense rate is fixed at 2, and you can actually check that on the knee board, as you can see here in the cockpit. Just a sec. There you go. So anyways, we're all bombed up at Cabaletti, and uh, so let's head out to the range. So when we're dropping CBUs, we need to think of a couple of things that are mainly driven by the fact that um, these cluster bomb units are not at all a precision weapon. We're not trying to strike a point target, we're trying to cover an area. So the first thing that we're going to have to deal with is how to actually determine when to drop them. But we aren't really looking for a really precise method. We're looking for a method that will allow us to start, you know, somewhere near the beginning of the target. But we're not going to be too worried about that being a, a hyper-accurate method. The second thing that we're going to need to figure out, though, is exactly how much area the CBUs can cover. And so we are going to start, You can, if you look down at the weapons uh, panel, you can see we're going to start with a single drop. Because um, we're going to have to do a little bit of characterization work here to figure out just exactly how much one pulse of CBUs is worth in terms of how much ground they cover. Uh, and then we're going to have to try and uh, figure out exactly how close together to drop those pulses and figure out how much area we can cover. So uh, we're in there getting ourselves off the ground here. And uh, let's go on out to the range north of Cobaletti. OZ-1, passing waypoint 2 at 6,000. And we'll see how good we can get at uh, some cluster chucking here. Okay, so we're well on our way, headed out to the range here. Just getting ready to make some final uh, setup for the run-in. You can see the uh, the weapon system panel down here. We're, uh, we have the two inner pylons selected. We're going to do a single drop uh, of one of the CBUs. I'm also going to turn on the target impact tracking system range uh, software here. Okay, now we're starting to get set up for our run here. We need to decide exactly how we're going to decide when to drop the CBUs. And uh, after a bit of practice, which I haven't bothered putting on camera for you guys, uh, I've decided that the easiest way to do this is not actually to use the site at the front of the aircraft, but actually use uh, landmarks to the side. So knowing where the target is, we pick a landmark to the side. So we're going after the triple target. We're going to use the compound with buildings on the left. And since the CBUs drop almost straight down, we're basically going to pick a landmark that's a little bit in front of our target and as we go by it out the left hand window we're going to pickle and uh, we may not get all that close to a precision drop but i think we'll get close enough to cover the target when we're doing this as an area drop so here we go we're coming in at 500 feet 500 knots and just as we pass the compound there we drop now we're going to stop uh, we're going to go to pause here it's an interesting little trick one of the A4 developers pointed out is that uh, pause makes the aircraft stop, but not the ordnance. So the cluster bomb units are still descending to the ground while we're paused here. So it gives us a chance to actually see what's going on. So uh, quickly, first of all, let's rewind the tape and take a look at the actual CBU deployment. 
And here in slow-mo you can see basically one pulse and if you look carefully you'd notice that was two tubes of bomblets coming up. So now what happens when they actually hit the ground? Let's take a look at that. And here we are in slow-mo again. Alright, you can see multiple units hitting. That's uh, two tubes worth of CBUs. Now to get an idea of the size of the pattern, uh, we can compare it to the target circles on the ground there which are 25 meters in diameter. So I'm going to call that a pattern that's about uh, 50 meters across and 25 meters long or so. So a single pulse, two tubes, gives us a 50 meter by 25 meter drop pattern. Okay, well let's, uh, let's keep going. Uh, first of all, we can get our uh, results here from Target Impact Tracking Script. And we can see now, the we can see there were two releases. Um, looking at where they ended up, not really very useful, because I believe that it is actually tracking when they come out of the tubes, not looking at where they actually hit the ground. So um, let's just uh, continue on here. Uh, let's call ourselves rolling in hot again, so we make sure that we get a result on the next run. And let's, uh, let's get out of pause here and continue on. Okay, that was a single drop from a single pod. Now why don't we try doing another drop here where we just uh, drop from two pods at the same time. So we'll drop uh, from both left and right pods to see if that changes the pattern at all or whether it just kind of makes it a bit more dense. So we'll go around and give that another run. Okay, we're coming around here on the target again. There's the town. Take a look to the left. Uh, off the tip of that finger, kind of in the middle, is our targets. And we've got the little compound to the left. So again, our aiming procedure is this. We dive down um, to about 500 feet, get level uh, in front of the target, pull up. We want to be going around 500 knots. And we're just looking out the left-hand window, and we're picking a landmark that's a little bit ahead of the target and waiting as we pass that landmark uh, to pickle. Um, so let's just try that procedure again. So this time we're dropping from both tubes, but we're only dropping a single impulse. So we expect to drop four tubes and we'll see whether that spreads out the pattern anymore from what we got when we just dropped a single tube. So here we go, getting down to altitude, getting down to 500 right around there and as we go by on the left pickle okay let's pause it again here and take a look at what happens yes so we get a single pulse from both tubes at the same time and take a look at what we get in terms of a blast pattern here not looking like it's really a whole lot bigger than it was the last time so regardless of uh, how many tubes we drop, um, when we drop a single impulse, it looks like we get about a 25 by 50 meter pattern, and we confirm that we dropped four tubes, two from each side. Okay, well let's, uh, let's go around again. This time, let's see what happens if we drop them. Instead of dropping them as a pair, let's drop two, but let's drop them as a ripple single and let's give them uh, I don't know something about 80 milliseconds between and see well let's actually make it about a hundred let's make it a nice even hundred milliseconds between the two uh, between the two pods and let's see what that gives us Okay, here we are coming around again. I use this town in the foreground there with the little finger of wood sticking out and I follow that up to the finger in the target area that points at uh, the target. So we're just getting ourselves lined up on that. Now, we've dropped a little long on the first two, I think. So I'm gonna try and pickle just a little bit earlier on my cue on the left-hand window there as it goes by. Maybe get it a little bit farther forward on the window when I uh, pickle. Uh, I really don't think it's all that sensitive. Okay, so now we're just trying to get down 
we're keeping the flight path vector the top of the circle right on the edge of the woods there so we're going to get down towards the edge of the woods at around 500 feet uh, when our alarm goes off we're going to pull up right about there and as it goes by there and okay let's pause and cut to the uh, rewind and cut to the extreme slow-mo and just watch the deployment here and we got one two so each deploy each pod deploys two tu tubes uh, with a hundred millisecond delay let's see what that kind of pattern that gives us on the ground okay well a more accurate drop that time so yes we can see there's definitely two lines and when all is said and done I'm going to say that gives us, you know, that's a pattern that's about 50, a 50 meter circle. So, uh, a ripple single drop with a 100 millisecond uh, delay gives us basically a 50 meter by 50 meter circle. So, I think that's pretty good data. And we just check our uh, TITS results here and we confirm that we had four drops. Okay, so... Let's just do one more thing here. I'm just interested to see what happens if we do this as a ripple pair instead of as a ripple single. So let's just do one more drop uh, where we do ripple single or ripple pairs. Still only dropping. Uh, we're still set to two impulses and we're going to use the 100 millisecond delay. Now, uh, the reason I want to do this is I'm trying to, I'm not sure whether setting the AWRS to 2 means we'll only drop one pair or whether each pod will actually uh, drop twice. So that's the last thing I just want to figure out about how the settings work here. Uh, so as you can see we're uh, set up to drop ripple pairs, 100 millisecond delay and uh, let's go see how that works. Okay, see here we are coming around on the target one more time, just checking off our checkpoints. We got the woods south of the town or north of the town, pointing up towards the fields, pointing up towards the finger. We're rolling in on the finger. We're put the flight path vector, so that's the top of the inside ring. We're going to put that uh, on the tree line, just to this side of the tree line. Going to start pulling up. We get down to around a thousand feet. Try and level out at 500 feet, 500 knots more or less. And try and pick a release point by watching out the side window. Here we go, starting to pull up. Let's get up above the target there, watching our checkpoint come by on the left. And right about there. Alright, so let's take a look. There's the deployment. We can see that both pods, both pods released twice. That's the important thing we want to know. So ADWRS set to two, we get two releases from both pods. Let's see what the pattern looks like. All right, there they are. We we're a little early this time, but we're going to cover the target, so that's okay. You can definitely see two lines of bomblets. And when all is said and done, it looks to me like they're covering an area still about a 50 meter circle. So uh, a double impulse basically is covering with a 100 millisecond delay. So two impulses, 100 millisecond delay. We're getting fairly continuous coverage and we're covering uh, about a 50 meter circle with two drops. So the more drops we have, the longer that pattern will get, but it won't ever get any wider than 50 meters. So I think that's... Uh, that's good data to, uh, to take to the bank. Let's take a look at the TITS. And I think if you count those up, you're going to find that there are eight releases, which is what we expect because we had two releases of two from each of the pods. All right. Okay, well, I think we're ready for kind of our final exercise here. We drop a full load of CBUs. Uh, but to do that, I'm actually going to have to go back and land and recycle because I've dropped uh, a number of them, so I'm going to have to get a full load and we can see exactly how big a target we can cover. Hey, okay, we've been back to Kobaletti. We're back in the air, setting up the, the weapon system here, the weapons panel. we got a 100 millimeter delay. We're going to ripple single, and we're basically going to drop everything we've got. So that actually should be uh, 10 impulses 
per pod. So a total of 40 tubes. Okay, rolling in on our target. Like, just like every other time. Hit the flight path vector at the beginning of the tree line there. Gonna pull up, start pulling up around a thousand feet, try to level out around 500. So 500 feet, 500 knots. Pick a point on the left hand side as we're going by the target and we will see how big a target we can hit if we drop the entire load of CBUs. Here comes the target, we're good and level, and right about there. All right, good drop. Now let's watch it in slow-mo from the back, yes. So the pods are alternating, dropping two tubes at a time. Count, you should find 10 impulses per, the last one's probably a single pulse. We only had 19, good. Okay, let's swing around and see what we get for a blast pattern. Okay, started a little bit early, but that's okay. We were trying to do, and so if we're doing this right, we should have 20 impulses 25 meters apart. We should have about a 500 meter pattern. And I can tell you from having checked in the mission editor, uh, that that's about what we got. We got about a 500 meter pattern about 50 meters wide. So that seems to be the answer for CBUs. Drop them at 500 feet, 500 knots, and you can get a pattern about 500 meters long and 50 meters wide. That's how it looks to me anyways. If any of you guys uh, give it a try, um, let me know what your results are. For now, though, I think that's going to be the story on CBUs for the Community A4E Skyhawk, and this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.